Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? I apologize these last couple of days for the videos being so close to the middle of the day. Um, because my medicine's changed and I'm sleeping diff way differently. And last night, I just could not fall asleep. I didn't go to sleep till probably 4 in the morning. So I got to do some research. I to dig around and do some things online. And I actually have some interesting stuff to share with you guys this morning. Um, first, we're going to have a point of interest uh, concerning a, a hot topic today. And this is something I don't see really see anybody explore. Second, we're going to have a reminder. And I'm going to give you a statement of something on another point of order that's going to be concerned, uh, concerns the reminder we're going to have. And uh, you'll know what I'm talking about as we go. So we're going to start in, in Revelation chapter 13. And there's a very interesting verse in here. And it's a very, very hotly uh, debated verse. And this is something people have been trying to do for generations. Who's the Antichrist? How can we figure out who he is? Personally, doesn't matter. There's a lot of people in this world today that, that fall in that role. It doesn't matter. We're not going to be here to see him. Now, that's part of our reminder. But there's a lot of people watching for him. There's a lot of people, the, the resurgence of people going against the preacher rapture is starting to come back up again like it was in 2019. And they're out there and they're harassing other Christians and they're giving them grief. Ah, I'm ready to die. I'm ready to die. Yeah, wait until your life is on the line and see how you cry like a girl. Nobody's ready to die. Nobody. I tell you from personal experience, having my life handed to me, put literally put in my hands four times in Iraq. When you're faced with your own death, you're not ready. No one's ready. No one's ever ready. I saw grown men, seasoned veterans, cry. Scream. I saw it with my own eyes. You may think you're ready, but you're not. Don't ever get to a level of pride to think, I'm going to arrogantly walk into a, a collection center or a FEMA camp and declare myself a Christian so I can get my head cut off. Guarantee you, whatever's in your bowels will be released from your system whenever you get over there and you see that big guillotine and see how heavy it is and they start walking you up there and plopping you down in there. And the Bible says God resists the proud. So don't get that level of pride in you. It's not good for you. It's not going to do you any good anyway. No one is ready to die. No one. It is the Lord who grants us passage. It is the Lord who escorts us through the valley. Now, the Antichrist. We're never going to see him. We're never... Well, take that back. We may see him, but we won't know who he is. It's up for us to know. It doesn't matter. We're not going to be a part of this. We're not supposed to be a part of this. We're going to have a reminder on this here shortly. But there is a way to calculate who he is. Now, how to do that, I don't know. Because that's a lot of information you have to have access to. I don't have that access, so I can't, I can't declare who it is. But the Bible tells us how to do it. It tells us how to calculate the number. You go to Revelation 13 and scroll all the way to the bottom. Verse 18 says, Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Now in the King James, it's uh, 603 score and 6. Same number. Now if you go back up, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10 verses, you go back up and read up there, you see what's going on, you see what he's doing. Go back to, go to verse 13, right up here. He performs great signs that, even, uh, that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. He deceives those who dwell on the earth. Those who dwell on the earth, the earth dwellers. We're not earth dwellers, we're heaven dwellers, people. Deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image of the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. Interesting series of words when people keep talking about how the Antichrist is going to get shot in the head and, and be revived from it. No, the Bible literally says, you just saw it, he's going to be wounded by the sword. Think about that for a minute. What sword is that talking about? He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or their forehead, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him understand. You calculate who this is. Now, 
I don't know how to calculate who he is because there's information I need that I don't have access to. However, I do know how to calculate his number. And it's in the Bible. And I still don't understand why people don't get this. Go to Numbers 1.1. 1, 1. Verse 2. Take a census of all the congregation of the children of Israel by their families, by their father's houses, according to the number of names, every male individually. The number of a man was the number given, verse 3, from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war in Israel. You want to figure out who the Antichrist is? This is how you figure it out. You look at his family and you look at how many members of his family are there. The Bible literally tells you this right here. Look at how many members of his family appear that are able to go to war. That are what, uh, 20 years old and above. And you count them. He will be family member 666. Now you're going to have to count back in the past, obviously. <coughs> but that's how you do it. The book of Numbers gives us the answer. Now how you're going to find the information to be able to do that, I have no idea. These All these people lived in one place. You have to find that out. But we know that the Jews will never accept a Muslim as their Messiah, and they will never accept anyone else as their Messiah unless he's Jewish. He must be one of the tribes of Israel because they know by the Torah that the, Mes the Messiah that's coming will be of the line of David, which means he must be of the tribe of, I forget what tribe he was from, but Benjamin, anyway, he must be in that line. So he must be in one of the identified tribes. That's your secret. That's how you figure it out. You want to know who it is? That's how you do it. It is not Gematria. Gematria is demonic. Gematria was created for very other worse purposes than what we use it for. Don't use Gematria. I did a video on that. I showed you that it's demonic. This is how you figure it out. It's right here in the Bible. It's always been here. Take a census of all the congregation of the children of Israel by their families, by their father's houses, according to the number of names. Argument over. That's how you do it. I don't know how to calculate it because I don't have information. I don't have particular information to find this. I'm sure somebody out there listening does. If you do, you can figure out who the Antichrist is because there is only one person that will come up with that number. Only one. There has been one in every generation. There is only one that will come up. And he's going to be somehow tied to Israel. So there you go. That's how you, that's how you solve that problem. Now, there's another one we're going to go to, and it is 1 Thessalonians 2. Oh, no. Not 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 2. Duh. 2 Thessalonians 2. Okay, now this is a reminder. And this goes into what I just showed you guys. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, we all need this reminder of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to soon be shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Now, what is Paul saying? He's like, he's doing damage control. What happened? Somebody, evidently it was two individuals, if you dig further in history, had started sending letters to them claiming to be Paul, saying, hey guys, you missed it. The rapture's post-trib. It's not pre-trib. You missed it. And they're freaking out. So this whole post-trib thing, it's not old. Or, I'm sorry, it's not new. It's very old. The, the pre-trib rapture was not created by Darby. They believed it then in, second, in the, in the Thessalon Thessalonican church. So Paul had to do damage control. Hey, 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 guys, calm down. Look, you got some letters? Okay, don't, that's not from us. I didn't tell you this. Why would I tell you that when I was just there with you and I told you something completely different? In fact, you go back to 1 Thessalonians and he talks about it. Verse 3, let no one deceive you by any means, by any means, for that day will not come. What day is he talking about? Remember, there's two days being spoken of here. The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the day of Christ, and the day of the Lord. Two things. Two things. 
why is it why is, are two different things mentioned? Because it's two different days he's talking about. The day of the Lord is the end of the tribulation. The day of the Lord is when he comes and he takes his kingdom back. Does that final big battle. It's a big day. It's a huge day. It's spoken of throughout the Bible. Old and New Testament. The day of the Lord is a specific. The day of Christ is different. The day of Christ is the day he comes and collects his people. Now look at what he's saying in verse 3. Look at the context here. It's capitalized D. But so what day is he referring to? Day of the Lord. Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day, the day of the Lord, will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed the son of perdition. It means that the day of the Lord cannot happen until after this time frame. Now, when you go and look in the context in the book of Revelation, it tells you that the whole world is going to be affected by this. Everybody will be affected. Well, evidently, they hadn't been affected yet. So the son of perdition hadn't shown up yet. Correct? Right. See, this is what's called reasonable deduction, guys. I did a video on this, too, a while back. Reasonable deduction. This is how you stay sober-minded. This is how you don't get caught up in all these deceptions that are going on now. People are losing their minds right now. So I'm going to be the gut check guy. I'm going to get everybody back on track. Look. Only the son of perdition can be revealed when we're at that time frame. The day of the Lord will only come when he has been revealed. Now, you go back to the seals, that's the first seal. I saw somebody last night talking about the sixth seal. What? No, first seal, dude. Come on. The first seal. So, we know that that's going to be the, the kickoff to the tribulation is all the seals. That's the kickoff to it. How do we know that? Go to the sixth seal, bottom of the chapter. And you see what they're saying. The day of the Lord is at hand. It's It's amazing. It all connects, and it tells you exactly what's going to happen here. But you got to read the Bible to see this. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away come first. What falling away? What is he talking about? This is another hot topic. Personally, because the word used here, and the word that was used before in the other versions, was a different word. It was the, actually the root word. And because this word is only used, I think, twice in the Bible, and the a root word is used 16 times, I kind of believe it's both. It is the falling away from faith and the tribulation, and the rapture of the church. I think it's both. And it's a combination of the two. The main focus is going to be the falling away, people falling away from faith, which we have happening right now. It is, it is happening really bad right now. So, the falling away... The, the falling away from faith, the, the rapture of the church, and the man of sin must be revealed before Christ can come on his final day and take back his kingdom. That would be at the, this is be at the beginning of the tribulation, that will be at the end of the tribulation. Clearly, it's right there. Reasonable deduction shows you this. For who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Look at, look at what it says. Look at the wording. The key is in the wording. He opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. He's going to make himself the head honcho of everything. None of y'all worship none of this stuff. You're going to worship me and me alone. Now Paul says, do you not remember, in verse 5, that when I was still with you, I told you these things? He's like, look guys, I don't need to write this letter to you. I told you this already. Why would I tell you this and then contradict myself? It makes no sense. Verse 6, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. What is restraining him? And now you know what is restraining him. What's restraining him? The Holy Spirit's restraining him. Where's the Holy Spirit? In the church, in the believers. The Bible says this over and over and over again. So now they know that they're restraining him. So they have to be removed first. Go back to the other verse where it talks about the falling away. What does that mean? Well, to me, it means both. The falling away from faith which would give him his power and the removal of the church, which would allow him to do the things he was doing. Why do you think the aliens have a touchdown? They can't. Holy Spirit's still here. They're not going to touch down and reveal themselves until the Holy Spirit is gone because you have to have a population that is willing to accept what's being given to them. You have to. Well, they can't do that because so many Christians are still able to communicate and they're still able to tell them, hey, those are demons. 
They, Satan has to make sure, in order for his plans to come to fruition, that he gets rid of everybody that goes against him. He must have a populace fully convinced that we don't know what we're talking about. And the only way he can do that is if we are gone. So he's waiting. He knows. He knows when his time is. He's waiting. I dare say that the aliens may come the next day after we're gone. I don't know. But we have to be gone first. It cannot happen while we're here. Why haven't we gone to war in Iran? Why hasn't it happened? They committed war crimes on our soil. Just like, well, last month or the month before. Why haven't we gone to war? They've been under steady barrages of rocket attacks over the Mideast. They've been attacking us directly in Iraq. Why haven't we gone to war? Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is still here. Once the Holy Spirit removes, the whole world will be plunged into war. Go read the seals. For this, for the mystery of lawlessness, verse 7, is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. So the restrainer, and everybody agrees the restrainer is the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells you this. And the Holy Spirit is within the believer. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. If it was God, he would remove himself. Well, he can't. He's going to be taking us out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. When the church leaves, then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Guys, look at verse 7. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. We're holding back Satan, and we're holding back the evil that wants to overcome this world. The only way he can be fully revealed in his own time is if we're gone. We have to be removed. The rapture of the church must happen. The falling away must happen. Again, I think it's both. The falling away from faith and the removal of the church. It has to happen that way. It cannot happen any other way. In the presence of the Holy Spirit, Satan has no power. In order for him to deceive the world, he must have all of his power. We must be gone first. Satan is not powerful. He's, he has no authority. People give him way too much credit. It, this has to happen this way. And the order is given in 2 Thessalonians 2. These are the events that will unfold. It has to happen this way. Now, why is it so many people haven't been able to figure out who the Antichrist is? And I just showed you guys how to do it. Because his, they're being blinded. Well, we're near the end now, so it's probably being opened up and being revealed. Somebody out there, people out there, they have access to this information. They can calculate, or they may already have calculated, who he is. <clears throat> Ancestry.com, I guess. I don't know. So this clearly tells us the, the series of events that will happen. And Paul reiterated this point multiple times. This is It has to unfold this way. I told you this, I'm telling you this again, it has to unfold this way. Now, this is Mr. Christian reminding you, this is how it has to happen. No, we are not in the tribulation. It's impossible, we can't be. Listen, the tribulation is a seven-year time frame described by the Bible as the wrath of God poured out full strength on the whole earth. <coughs> and everyone who dwells on the earth. Why is God pouring his wrath out on us? Why? He's not. He never. He said he would never do... We're exempt from the wrath of God because we believe the truth and we put our faith in his son, Jesus Christ. We're exempt from the wrath of God. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We're not earth dwellers anymore. We're heaven dwellers. We're here... I just read you the scripture over the last few days. While during our stay here in Second Peter... During our stay here, how should we be conducting ourselves? Well, that seems to mean we're on vacation and we're, we're, we're traveling. This isn't our home. We have another home. We are citizens of heaven. We are the children of God. He's not going to pour his wrath out on us. He chastises us every day. That's how we know we're children of God. The Bible literally says this. And people keep getting these goofy ideas. That we're in the tribulation. Where's that? Show me scripture. 
Anybody I run into when, when they talk about it, show me scripture. Well, there's this and that and the other. Yep, you took every bit of that out of context. Now, let's go read it in context. And when I show them that, they do one of two things. They either believe it and walk away and don't want to talk anymore, or they attack me and then they don't want to talk anymore. Look, the truth is contained within the word. You've got to decide whether or not you believe his word is true. Because it tells you exactly in 2 Thessalonians 2. The church will be removed. The Antichrist will be revealed. All hell will break loose on the earth. The only way, and then Jesus will return and fix everything. The only way these events can happen in this order is if the church is removed out of the way first. So that everything that happens on this earth will go according to God's plan involving wrath. Now we got a bunch of goofy people out there trying to separate out the wrath. Why? It doesn't make any difference. The wrath is the wrath. Either way, it's going to be a horrible time on this earth. There's people out there saying, oh no, we're going to have three and a half years of peace. No, we're not. They will say peace and safety, but sudden destruction will come upon them. They're going to say it. People will see and hear them say it, but it'll be mass chaos all around them. Obama stood there on TV, told the whole whole world, we're under non-combat operations in Iraq. Yeah, I was under a rocket attack when he said that. I was in the defect, watching him on Air Force Network TV, eating dinner, and we came under a rocket attack. He said, everything's cool. Nobody's dying. We had no deaths. Yeah, I know we had 17 deaths that month, just to the people I knew of. Peace and safety. All around us was destruction. It's nonsense. People aren't taking the, the word of God into account here and they're listening to other people and they're letting them sensationalize this stuff and get them convinced that they have to fill their house with junk. They have to do. They have to go move out into the woods. They have to do all these crazy things that God never said to do. Stop it. I'm going to address this here in a few days because <clears throat> I have another video that I'm going to do. It'll be the last video in the series of Should Christians uh, Prep. And I'm going to show you guys uh, another another proper food source that you can use, something that's better. We're going to try it out on screen. But I'm going to remind everybody of a, of a bunch of very important things in that video. I highly recommend everybody watches it. We must be sober-minded here, folks. We must pay attention to what God's Word says concerning everything. And when somebody presents us with their argument, and it's always an argument, it seems like, we must be ready to stand up and tell them, whoa, 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 hold on there. Hold on there, slick. I don't want to hear what you have to say. Because the word of God denies you. And I always wait for them to say, well, you need to listen to me and not listen to the word of God. Oh, so now you're the leader. Now you're the, you're the, the, the head honcho that knows what he's doing. Oh, so now you're God? Okay, great. That's the Antichrist spirit. You need to get away from me, Satan. I always wait for him to make that mistake. That when they show their pride. Oh, okay. Well, you're not God. So I'm not going to listen to you. Because if God gave you that, it would match his word. That's your catalyst. That's your template. That's your test. You know how they get the little test fill in the circle completely with your pencil? Don't let any lines stretch out to the other side. You do multiple choice. And then they have a template. They lay over the top. What answers fit in, what answers don't. The ones that don't get marked wrong, the ones that fit in, pass. That's what I do to everything everybody tells me. Lay it on the Bible. Does it fit? Does it fit? Does it match? Does it make sense? And I'm not cutting anybody any quarter here. I don't care who they are. If you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're not, what you're pre preaching doesn't match the word of God, it's wrong. I'm going to tell you that it's wrong. Not because I'm being mean to you, not because I'm being hateful to you, because I love you and don't want you to walk in deception. I want you to see the truth. I don't care who a person is. If they're wrong and I can prove it with the word, you're wrong. That's it. Done. Finished. End of discussion. You don't have to like it. It's still, still fact. Because I'm wrong too. And when I'm wrong, I tell myself I'm wrong. Nope, you're wrong. Stop doing that. I don't cut myself any quarter either. We have got to get this under control within ourselves. You can't get, do it in other people. We've got, we have to do it within ourselves. We have to know what his word says and be able to go back to it and test everything and use that as our template for everything we hear and see and not let people deceive us. 
and put us in fear, in bondage. Let us not go back to the elementary elements that we used to be in, the beggarly elements. We have been pulled out of that. We've been called out to something greater. Let us walk in that instead and be a light to the world. I'm through with nonsense. I'm through with silliness. I'm through with, with, with stupid ideas. And I'm through with things that don't match the word of God. And when I'm confronted with it, I tell somebody flat out, this is what it is, guys. We have got to be sober-minded about this. So today was a day of reminders and a clue. I have another little tidbit to add now that I've shared all that with you. People are like, oh, we can figure out when the church is going to be raptured. We can this, we can that. And all these people picking these days and all these people are wrong. They've been wrong for almost three years. I don't know how long some of them have been doing it before that, but so far, from my observation, at least three years. You guys want to figure out how long, much longer we got? Figure out how long the church of Laodicea lasted. I don't know how anybody hasn't figured this out yet. Every church that was listed in the book of Revelation that Jesus addressed existed for a period of time. And then they were all done away with. Then you go and you look at uh, the, the ages of the church age, the last 2,000 years, and you can see where every one of those churches existed. We're in the, la the age of the Laodicean church now. All aspects of all the churches are currently active right now, but we're in the church of Laodicea now, started at about 1948. Go figure out how long the church of Laodicea lasted. And it shouldn't be hard to figure out how to calculate the time. See what you come up with. And then ask the Lord if that's the truth. And prove it. This is, this is just driving me crazy watching people run around like chickens with their head cut off. When the chicken coop is right there. See, the Word of God tells us all these things. No, let me, let me make sure I make this point very clear. No, the Word of God does not tell us when the rapture will happen. It doesn't. The Bible says we won't know. But you can sure get the time frame pinned down to the season. And the Bible shows you the season. I've shown much of this. This is the last one I'm going to show anybody. It's not like it's a secret. It's not like I've been holding on to this forever. You can go in the Word of God and you can find it. It's easy. But we've got to be willing to read the Word of God. All the secrets are contained within there. I've gotten to the point where some people I started asking, some people have asked me questions, and they're just outlandish questions. And I ask them, have you not read the Bible? Well, yeah, I've read it a couple of times. Well, evidently you haven't because you missed all these points. They're in there. And I give them quick references of what, where the scriptures are. So you've got homework to do. I'm not going to hold people's hand anymore. Unless making a discernment, somebody needs to be saved with compassion. Most people, I'm going to pull, pull them out of the fire which is going to be rough. And I have to do this. We're not children, guys. We're grown up. We're adult Christians. We know the truth. Why are we acting like we don't? Let us walk in the truth God gave us. Let us stop listening to these people who don't know what they're talking about, who are lying to us, who are coming out with these outlandish, like the guy that came out, I forget what his name was. He came out with this weird idea that the throne of Christ is going to set on the rock that's under the dome of the rock in the Al-Aqsa Mosque. What? It, that makes no sense. Why would he put his throne up there? The Bible says he's going to put his throne where the temple was. The temple wasn't up there. The archaeologists have already proven it. It's down at the top side of the city of David. In the book of Acts, it says that a detachment of Roman soldiers had to be sent down to the temple to get Paul and save him from the riot that was happening. They brought him back up to the fort, and he stood on the steps that Pilate stood on when he condemned Jesus. He stood on those steps and addressed the people. We know where those steps are. And when you look down the hill below you, you see exactly where the temple was. As a matter of fact, they're building everything underground to support the weight of the coming temple. This is easy stuff. You just got to be willing to put in a little bit of time to look at the information. That guy, whoever that guy is, he doesn't have no idea what he's talking about. 
because he's not taking it biblically. I saw uh, somebody had sent me a couple of his videos. I listened to them. I found all kinds of errors in there because it didn't match the Bible. So the whole I, the whole concept behind this is we have to stop believing other people and we have to stop getting caught into the grandstanding where they're trying to uh, make something out to be more than what it is. What we view as glorious and true and amazing and holy is different than what God views it. We have to start looking at this, these things through God's lens and his lens is this book. And when we look at it through this book, we realize what they're teaching us is wrong and what they've been teaching us all this time is wrong. We have to look at God's word and let God's word show us these things. And when you do, the Holy Spirit will teach you. The Bible says this. And then when you're confronted with these arguments and people start mocking you, turn and look at them. You just here to make fun of me or you want to have an actual discussion? Because I don't have time for, the, for anything else. You put them in their place. And then when they say, okay, I want to have an actual discussion. Good, sit down. Here's what I'm going to show you. And you show them the truth. And you start asking them questions and put the, the basketball back in their hands. Okay, how does this go? How is that? What about this? What about that? You start asking questions. Don't say, now, you want to sit here and mock me because I don't agree with what you agree with? Yet you don't even know the word that tells you these things? Who do you think you are to, to, to go out there and spout that you think you know the Bible? When you clearly don't know it, because of the scripture I'm showing you, you've never seen before. And I've had people tell me that, well, I've never seen that scripture before. Wait a minute, just two emails back, you told me you read the Bible several times. What do you mean you never saw that before? Evidently, you haven't read the Bible. Because they're reading what people tell them to read, they're not reading the whole thing. And I'm, I'm telling you, like, I don't pull people, no, I'll give people a little slack. Tell them flat out, who do you think you are to present yourself as somebody who knows scripture and is a theologian and you don't even know what the word of God says? You don't even know how to search the word of God to find the truth. And you're out there telling people this? You're deceiving people? Good luck when you see him. you got a lot to answer for. You're probably not going to like the answer you get from him either. Because the Bible tells us what happens to people that do stuff like that. We have got to be sober-minded. Folks, we're, at, we're so close to the end now that the warnings are going out full force. God is telling everybody. He's purging his church. John MacArthur said it best the other day. He said, I think the coronavirus was the best thing to happen to us. He was because it's purged our church, and it's still purging our church. How many people have come to faith and are dedicated to the Lord now and have solidified their faith to the Lord now since coronavirus came on the scene? And how many have been shown for who they really are and have walked away? God is purging his church. He's purging who's going to be in the truth and who isn't. Who are his children and who aren't? Now, it's not specific as to what kind of church you go to. Have you become more dedicated to the Lord since the coronavirus has happened? Has your faith become stronger? This coronavirus was for a reason. God is purging his church. Why is he purging his church? Because he's getting ready to take him home. He's getting ready to take all of us out of here. And he's getting out the bad element, the false converts, the false believers, the antichrists, the little antichrists, the demons, all the individuals who have put themselves in these positions of power and authority concerning the scriptures. He is pushing them out, showing them for who they are, and eliminating them from his congregation. And he's bringing his congregation together. And I'm telling you this as sure as I'm sitting here and, and that I've been doing this for two and a half, almost three years. When the rapture happens, there will be entire churches that will still be left here. And they will be sitting in there and they'll be going, what happened? Why are we still here? And then they're going to try to justify it and they'll be wrong. There are going to be churches that are going to be completely empty. Everyone gone. There are going to be churches where just leadership was gone. There's going to be churches where half the congregation is gone. There's going to be churches where one person will show up and everybody else is gone. And all these people will know they made a mistake. Don't make a mistake. We can know the truth. All we have to do is read it. Why do we let other people tell us what it says? Don't let me tell you what this says. You read it. This has been my appeal from the very beginning of 2019. You read it. Don't let me or anyone else tell you what the Bible says. You go read it. I showed you the scripture on the screen. Go read it. 
You read it for yourself because it's different if you go look at it yourself. And don't just read what I showed you. Read all of it. It's worthy of your time. It's worthy of your faithfulness to read God's word in its entirety and to apply it as truth and as the template for everything you see in here. You do that, then you will not walk in deception. Right now we're walking in the in in Second Thessalonians two nine. Look at verse nine, the first one in red. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Those four verses are a condemnation to all who would deny God and deny his word. To those who would go out there and would teach others the lie. Those who would deceive people for the fun of it. Those who would mock and scoff and attack and show hatred to the people who are supposed to be their brethren. That's a condemnation. If the rapture happens tomorrow, those people are going to be left here. How do I know this? Bible says it. Don't be one of those. Today is the day of salvation. If you've been walking in deception, today is your chance to fix it, to change it. Stop what you're doing. Pick up your Bible and read it. Go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, show me the truth. Lead me into the light. I don't want to be deceived anymore. Now, if you're one of those ones that's in league with Satan and working with him, shame on you for what you are doing. You have a condemnation coming. Or if you're one of those people that have been out there putting these deceptions out, knowing, knowing the truth, you know the truth and you still do it wrong. The Bible says very specifically, he who knows the right thing to do and doesn't do it for him, it is sin. You have sinned against a holy God and you will be condemned for it. You will be judged for it. Wrath will be poured out on you. You will be left here because there is no place in heaven for those things. You either are for God or against him. There is no middle ground. There is no fence riding. There is no... Well, I'm going to wait and see which way this goes. No. And I hear that with people all the time. Well, I believe the rapture is pre trib but I'm going to go ahead and stock my house up just in case something happens. Well, then you don't believe the rapture is pre trib You can't have it both ways. If you're currently trying to stuff your house and garage and sheds with all kinds of stuff, thinking you're going to survive the tribulation, you are, number one, you're in deception. Number two, you're a liar because you're lying to yourself. The Bible tells you not to do that. Do not lay up for the day of the Lord. Proper preparation and prepping are two different things. Prepping is going too far. Proper preparation and planning is what everybody does. No one who's, who's, who, who's lived through hard times, no one disagrees that three to six months, you lay up, that's, that's the normal way to do it. 25 years? Really? How long do you think the tribulation is going to be? It's self-justification. Don't do that. It's pride. Don't do that. And I'm telling you guys, and the reason why I'm doing the videos that I'm doing on that particular playlist is I'm showing people how disgusting some of this stuff is that they're selling. It's terrible. It's not food. And I'm showing you if, if you are going to put some stuff back, here's the right thing to do. Three to six months. I have less than six months of stuff put back. Because you're not going to stay at your place for seven years. Go read the Sixth Seal. Earthquakes and destroy everything. There aren't any houses. That's why they're in the caves hiding. There's no houses. There's no buildings. Everything's destroyed. Do not walk in pride. Do not let Satan deceive you. Do not let him convince you that this is what you have to do. Use your head. If you want advice, I'll give you advice on the proper way to do these things. I have training in this. I will send you a list of basic items that you need to put in a pack. You need to have a three-day bag. Three-day bag, you can take off on a three-day bag and leave. I'll put a Word document together. I'm going to email you a Word document. You don't need any more than that. Because we're not going to be here. A couple of days or a week's worth of stuff will go a long way in a disaster. That's proper, prudent planning. 
filling your garage with $10,000 worth of supposedly 25-year food that you've never eaten and never tried and never had your had your kids try? That's ridiculous. I had a guy email me a while back on my playlist. Because I think you're wrong about this all this stuff. I said, have you have you bought some? Yeah. What brands, if you don't mind me asking, you told me the brands. I said, I want you to go out and open one bucket out of each one of those. He, he hit, had three walls in his garage he filled in and he put stuff in his attic. I said, go out there and pick up one bucket from each brand, open them up, fix the food and, and eat it. Feed it to your children. Feed it to your neighbors. See what happens. Never heard back from it. Probably because he did it and realized the mistake he made. You know how many people you can feed with $10,000? How many poor people you can feed with $10,000? And I reminded him that, did they bring it in a, in a big truck? He goes, yeah, one of them, the ones, the orange, big shipping trucks. I said, yep. I said, did they drop it with a big, big pallet lift? Drag it up there and set it in your driveway? He goes, yeah. And I said, do you have neighbors? Yeah. He goes, your neighbors saw that. When things get bad, whose house do you think they're going to? You just put a big flag on top of their your house that says, food is here, come get it. You told them where to go. People aren't thinking. They're not using their head. They're not looking at this from a sober standpoint, and they're not putting their faith in God. I know that what I, this is the few things that I've put back, toothpaste, toothbrush, you know, triple antibiotic ointment, little stuff like that, just the few things that I have in case of a, of a, of a long-term uh, disaster or issue. is irrelevant to the plan of God. But I'm not going to dump a ton of money into that. I do that because that's prudent planning. And I know how to prudently plan. But all the stuff that I had prepped, because I used to have ten over 10 years worth of stuff, I, I sold it all off. I got rid of it. Because I realized I don't need any of this. It's useless. It's not going to do anybody any good if everything gets destroyed. Folks, we have to think about these things. We have to be careful with these things. We cannot get caught up in deception. Now, I'm going to talk more about that stuff with the prudent when I do that other video, the planning and everything. I'm going to talk more about that. I'm going to show you some scriptures in there. And I'm going to show you another uh, food source that can actually be a good one if you want to put some things back uh, that may be a, a little bit cheaper. Personally, though, I find MREs to be the best source because they're nutrient rich. But we'll talk about that then. But guys, please, please don't let people deceive you don't let them lead you if you if you hear it and you, you something's not quite right but you try to give them the benefit of the doubt you just open the door you just open the door for demonic control but if you hear them and you something don't sound quite right and you go test it you can prove whether it's right or wrong and it's simple as downloading an app like my sword i have my sword open right here and searching the scriptures on your phone or e-sword on your computer and you can search the Bible in less than five seconds, the whole Bible, and find all of it. We don't have to be in deception. We don't have to be uh, in league with the devil. We don't have to, be, to succumb to this world and its lies. We can walk in truth and be the children of God we're called to be. And they may mock and scoff, but they have no power over us because we are not of this world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, please hear me. Don't let them catch you at the end. Don't let them distract you when you're about to cross the finish line and get you to veer off to the left or right because of something cool or something neat or, hey, look, I found the date of the rapture. Dude, I was about to cross the finish line. That's the rapture. Don't let them do that to you. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, glory, to sing praises unto your holy name, to proclaim your wonderful works, your love, your mercy, all which endure forever to the world, to anyone who will listen, that they may be saved, that they may know the truth and be saved. Father, thank you for your word, your word that teaches us the truth, your word that shows us your will, that shows us your intent, 
It shows us who we are. It helps us discern everything that's going on around us. Father, I thank you for your love that you took the time to prepare this for us. In these last days when deception was at its highest ever in history, you gave us an entire booklet that would tell us what was right so that we would walk in faith in you. Father, I thank you for your mercy that you, you take the time to let us make mistakes and get corrected. You show us the way. You correct us and chastise us like children and bring us back into the light. Father, I, I can't be more thankful than what I am. And, and my heart is near bursting in my chest because I'm so thankful for the wonderful, wonderful things you're doing and how you're showing us all these things. But the deception is so high today, Father. I ask by intercession that you open the eyes of my brothers and sisters so that they can see the truth clearly and show them in your word where these things are so that they can prove it. Please make it as easy for them as you've made it for me. Even easier to find these things and to prove these things and to know what your word says. Because that is the truth, and we can't, we can't accept anything else as truth. And Lord, I pray that you shut down the people that are out there perpetuating horrible lies that are causing people to lose their lives. Telling them terrible things to do and causing them to lose their lives or even worse. Father, please give us a guiding light. Show us the right way. Steer us in the right direction. Make us to listen to your word and pay attention to what you say. Because we know that from you we get the actual truth. And we have nothing to worry about. We don't have to worry about being deceived. We don't have to worry about being misled. We don't have to worry about walking into the darkness or into the devil's den. And getting caught off guard. If we know the truth, we know what to stay away from. We can see what to avoid. We see trouble coming like the proverb says. And we hide ourselves. And the wicked go on and are punished foolish go on and are punished father I, I feel very powerfully that I need to reach out and, and pray for my brothers and sisters because I see I know not all of them are caught up in deception most of them are right where they're supposed to be and you're keeping them thank you father but I know there's a lot of them that aren't and they're being caught up in deception please help them father please save them I'm just a tiny little channel only reaching a tiny handful of people it's funny because when I first started doing this, I had 36 subscribers and I only reach about 36 people. It seems. But I can't stop proclaiming your message. I can't stop proclaiming your truth. I can't stop telling people what your word says. I can't stop. I'm in it for the long haul. I want to run this race and finish strong. And I want my brothers and sisters to cross that finish line with me. Father, please help us do what is right know what is right, believe what is right, and trust what is right. And everything that's right is you, is you, nothing else. Please make us to glorify you and to honor you and to worship you in everything we do every day, even in this dark age. Make us to be able to see clearly in the nighttime. In a, in a house full of light, a 40 watt bulb doesn't help. It actually makes a dark spot. But in pure darkness, a 40-watt bulb shines like a lighthouse, like a beacon for everyone to see. And we are 40-watt bulbs. We don't know that much. We don't shine that bright. We struggle through everything. But in a dark world, if that's all it takes. It's a 40-watt bulb. And everybody knows where to go. Father, make us not only to be that 40 watt bulb, but to get brighter and brighter and brighter as we learn more of your truth, to share more of your light with the world before everything changes. We see it on the horizon. We're, we've been watching it. We're watching it get closer every day. I see more of your prophecy becoming active, more things being solidified. But the scary thing is, is that the more you show, it seems like the more people walk away. Maybe this is the plan. I don't know. But I see a lot of people walking away from faith. Father, say it ain't so. Make us to stay in, your, in faith in you, in your truth, and strong. We thank you, Father, for all these things. We thank you for opening our hearts, our minds, our eyes, and our ears so that we may be fully exposed to your truth. We thank you that we're able to talk to people and help people and teach people out there. We're thankful that we have whatever ministry that we have so that we, we cannot be deceived and we won't deceive others. I, I can't knowingly do that. 
to somebody now that I know the truth. I can't. Father, I thank you for your mercy and grace. I thank you for your great love. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. I, I truly fear for all of us. I know where I stand. But my goal is to try to get everybody else to figure out where they stand. I know some of you, you know who you are. You're right on track. You're right where you're supposed to be. Right where the Lord led you. But there are a lot of people who are still struggling. A lot of people who are still getting caught up in deception. And they're like teetering on which way they're going to go. Get off the fence. Pick a side. To those that are doing that, get off the fence and pick a side. I recommend you come over here to this side because it's a lot better over here. And the train's about to leave. And I know that there's people that are watching that are still teaching lies and still teaching deception. To those people, I speak this. Repent now. Your condemnation is right, right in front of you. Repent now or you will not be able to avoid it. But I fear most of them, by the time they realize it, it'll be too late. This is our opportunity. This is our age of grace to get it right. And we do that by having faith in God and walking in his truth. Dark days ahead, folks, but the light is shining bright because we cannot help but see it. We cannot help but live in it. We cannot help but operate in it, preach in it, and show it to people. We can't help it. I can't help it. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.